Now joining us with an on-the-ground take on the new fast food minimum wage in California is Scott Roderick, a McDonald's franchisee in California. He owns and operates 18 restaurants in the northern part of the state. And Scott, why don't you just tell us what it's meant from your perspective? Well, good morning, Becky. Thank you for having me. Uh, the day has now dawned upon us where countless operators in California face this $20 wage. It impacts 15,000 restaurants up and down the state of California. It's going to be the most serious challenge for entrepreneurs that do business on the franchising platform. The vast majority of these restaurants run by small business proprietors who do business on the franchising platform, and the vast majority being family-owned and operated just like my restaurants. You know, I, I, I want to underscore the, the words family owned because franchisees are not large global corporations. The restaurant brands that we franchise uh, might be national in name, but franchisees are local business operators. It's an important fact that somehow it seems to get lost in the legislation that was crafted. And as you stated earlier regarding it is absolutely the intended consequences. And for many, what makes this legislation unprecedented, let alone extraordinary, is that it only benefits employees who work in franchise restaurants. Uh, whether you own one single donut shop or 10 donut shops in California, if you're part of a franchise brand with 60 or more locations, the new wage mandate is going to apply to you. And, and as you just stated, this is an extraordinary wage jump, 25 percent overnight. It's a serious concern for two reasons. First, it targets only fast food restaurants. And second, the sheer scale of the impact is just breathtaking. Um, historically, as you said about step, step laddered approach, you know, many cities have studied and put forth living wages with annual CPI bumps. Certainly the, the city that I opened my first McDonald's in, San Francisco, is one great example of that. They chose a fair living wage. They set a annual CPI cap. And it allows us to plan for that as small business owners. It's fair to the employees, and it's fair to people who create the jobs. We've already heard that some pizza delivery stores, for instance, have, have laid off or gotten rid of 1,000 jobs or more ahead of this, that they're just not going to do that anymore. They'll use the Uber and Lyft uh, apps to go ahead and have deliveries done that way. Uber and Lyft don't have to abide by that because their employees are not employees, they're contractors. You, you look at these workarounds that kind of happen with this. What are you doing in preparation? Are you going to lay people off or are you going to find other ways to make up and, and make good for that 25 percent increase in wages? Well, obviously, my team is focusing on every possible action to survive and maybe even thrive in the tumult that's going to start today. Uh, obviously, one of the most critical levers that you know I can use as a business owner is price, but I certainly can't charge $20 for a Happy Meal. So I have got to be aggressive in seeking labor efficiencies to drive the top line. I've got to accelerate the digital channels even more. I've got to promote more off-premise delivery. Families are going to have to make very hard choices around capital X expenditures, for example. <laughs> Can I postpone updating a restaurant dining room? Can I put off investing in a new rooftop HVAC? And even the bigger question, should I open a new restaurant in California against these extraordinary legislative headwinds? Uh, the topic of the day seems to focus on the obvious move to cut labor or reduce staff size. But frankly, at least in my organization, that's the last thing I want to do. People in my company, and it's been this way for 30 years, are my greatest single asset. So the last thing I, I want to do is impact the folks that run my Golden Arches. But as you pointed out, even leading up to today, Pizza Hut and, and Round Table Pizza have laid off 1,500 drivers up and down the state. In an area that I do business in, Redding, California, at the end of January, 18 Subway sandwich shops, family-owned, closed overnight. This, this is just a harbinger of things that will come and, and I am going to do everything I possibly can to not only protect and defend my equity, but to grow my business so that I have jobs to provide the community. Scott, I want to thank you for your perspective today. Scott Roderick, again, who owns 18 franchisees of McDonald's in California. We appreciate your time.